Hey, what's up? Welcome back to uh, this new video. This one is paper 52 of February, March 2023 for paper S1 of A level math. Now, with that being said, obviously we have to do the questions, but I will try to explain everything as detailed as possible. So here we have question number one. So each year, the uh, total number of hours X of sunshine in Kintu, I think it's a place, right, is recorded. So we we measure the um, the hours of sunshine. Anyways, during the month of June, and the results for the last 60 years are summarized in the table below. So basically, we have to look at this table below to help us solve the questions. Now, number of years. Now, we, if you were to add everything, you're supposed to get 60, right? Because it tells you there's 60 years in total. Okay. Now, part one. We have to draw the cumulative frequency curve. Now we have learned this concept in I think in O level paper two. Usually we we have the same thing basically, right? So um, we have to find the points before the uh, for the CF, and uh, we have to plot this below in this in this space in this graph. So let's try. So of course, first thing first, we always again always begin with the upper limit of your of your range. So first x less than, here we have 60, that's the first point, will be 4. Now let's continue. Use the uh, upper limit, 90. So everything on the left of 90 should be 8 plus this should be 12. Similarly, 110. Everything on the left hand side should be this, this, and this, that should be 26. Of course, we are just adding everything up on the left hand side, right? Now what's next? We have to uh, 140. Now the everything, that should be 26 plus this, should be this, the value of 51. And then 180, that'll be 58. And finally, should be 240 for the final point, that should be just 60. This and this have always to, they always have to match, right? Because we know that we have a maximum number of 60 years in this data set. Now of course the next will be two to try to scale this graph so we can have a smooth curve to represent this cumulative frequency graph. So one by one, the vertical axis is pretty simple. This is always going to be your CF for the vertical axis, so no problem for this one. Now, of course, one thing is always label the graph. So this is CF. And for this one, let's try to um, scale that properly so we can have something easy to work with. That is hours, right? For the values of of x. So this one is pretty easy. Should be just what? We have 0 here. We have from the values of 60. So from 0 to 60 for the cumulative frequency. So I'll try to break this down pretty easily. That should be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 and 60. Now the reason why I chose this scale, right, 10, 20, 30, is because it's easy to read. Because I know one square is just one, so one, two, three, four. It's easy, easy to read. That's why I chose that to be this way. This is pretty easy. Now how about the scale for the hours? We have to look at the value here and the value here. That should be 240, 30. So we have to begin at 30. So now, of course, you can. Uh, of course, it is up to your preference. Uh, it, it depends on how you want to break this down. Now, for me, I think it's easier if I try to first count how many intervals do I have and how can I break this down. Now, you can always, um, you know, use your calculator here to use the max value, two forty minus the min value. That will be the range you have to work with for this space over here. Now, um, I can try. So I'll try to use 40. That should become, um, that will be 70. 40, that should be 110. Add 40, should be 150. Add 40, that should be 190. Add 40, that should be 230. Add 40, that should be 270. Okay. So let's double check. So 30 plus, so 40 is the answer. 30 plus answer, 70, 110, plus 40, well, okay, I guess I made a mistake over here, 70 plus 40 should be 110, yeah, 
and 150, 190, one, okay, this should be fine. So this is my, my scale that I choose to use because I find it easy for me to, to use this. Again, because here we have 10 small squares, this whole thing is 40, so one square is three. Sorry, one square is, is four, right? 40 for 10 squares, one square is four. Now, once I have this, I can choose to uh, plot the points. So we have, the first point is 64. 60, this is the value of 50. 60 should be the midpoint over here. So 60, four, let's count. One, two, three, and four should be over here, okay? Next one is 90, 12. 90 is right here, so this should be. This is 70, that should be 90. Because this whole thing is 40, that should be 90 over here. 90, 12. So 11, 12. I think let me scale that for you because it might be confusing if you're reading this with me. Let me try to write this down. That should be 50. That should be a 90. This should be a 130 over here. This should be a 170. That should be 210. That'll be 250. Okay. So in this way, at least you understand and you can see properly where I'm, I am trying to sketch those points. I have 110, 226, so 110 is right here. 26 should be 25, 26, right here. And then I have 140, 251, so 140 is, this is 130, 150, 140 is a midpoint. 51 should be, one above 50, this is 50, 51 should be right here. And then I have 180, 58, so 180 should be right here, right? 58. Okay, that should be some over here. And then finally, we have the point 240, 60. 240 is the midpoint over here. And 60 is just the value on the line over here, the max value. There you go. So now once we have all the points, we have to try your best to join these with a, with a smooth curve. Of course, use a pencil. You know, if you make a mistake, you can always erase and go back to draw this properly. Okay, let me try. So for me, I'll try with the pen. That should be something like this. Okay, try your best. Here you go. I guess it's not too bad. It's not too bad, right? It's all right, it's not too bad. Now, if you want to join this with a zero, that's fine too. You can always connect these two to right here. Okay, cool. So this is your cumulative frequency graph. It should look like a snake. There you go, this shape. And this is your question part A for question one. Now for part B, we have to find the estimation for the 70th percentile. So have you heard this word before, 70%? So it's percentile will be 70 over 100% times the number of, of years that we have. That will be 40 second element. So we have to find the value at the 40 second element. So let's do this. So it should be over here. 42, so 41, 42 should be something over here. Now, this, this value will vary depending on your, on your graph, so it depends on how well you sketch your graph. Now, your value will maybe, will, there will be a range of accepted answers for you, so even though it could be tricky sometimes, you always have a, you know, um, some leeway to make some, uh, I guess, some estimation for the value that we get over here. So this is a one, two, three, three and a half, so I know one square is four, 3.5 times four is 14. 14 plus 110, the point should be 124. So that measurement for me seems to be 124 at the value of here. So for me, according to my graph, it is 124, okay? Now your value could be 126, 123, it should be okay, it should be around those values. Now, of course, the most important thing is you have to show these lines of how you get your answer. Now for part C, we have to find the estimate, estimate for the mean number of the hours of sunshine in Kintu 
over the last six years. Now, usually we use a formula here to find the mean, which is summation of fx divided by number of years, which is 60. So we first have to find this. So what is that? It's basically adding f times x for these one. Frequency is f. Now x, x you cannot choose a, you can choose a, a range. You cannot choose 30 to 60, it's not possible, right? How would you, how would you do this? Now, of course, we have done this many times in O-level. You would just choose the midpoint of this range, right? So let's do it. How would you find midpoint? 30 plus 60 divided by 2. That will be 45. Here we have 60 plus 90 divided by 2. That will be 75 for the midpoint. Again, to find the mean here, we have to find the midpoint of these range or domains. To, to use that to find fx and then add the fx together and then we can find the mean. So 90 plus 110 divided by 2. And then we have 110 plus 140 divided by 2. 125 over here. 140 plus 180 divided by 2. 160. And finally, here we go. 180 plus 240 divided by 2. That should be 210. Okay. All right. Cool. So once you have the, the midpoint here we are using, we can find fx. fx is basically the value of 4 times 45. So we have to add everything up, right? So of course you have to show your work here one by one for your answer. All right, so let, let me just do this with you as well because I don't want you guys to uh, just copy and not do this. Of course, we have to add everything. So the first one is, is the value of 4 times 45. Right, second one is the value of 8 times 75. Right, you can see here. 4 times 45, 8 times 75, 14 times 100, right? And then we have 25 times 125, right? And then we have what? The value of 7 times 160 plus 2 times 210. So once you have these, we have to find the sum. So let's add them up using your calculator, obviously. That should be what? So 45 times 4 plus 8 times 75 plus 1400 plus 25 times 125 plus 7 times 160 plus 2 times 210. Here you go. That should be 6, 8, 4, 5. The sum of fx in this data set. So finally, we have to replace. That should be just the value of 6, 8, 4, 5 on top divided by 60 for your mean value. That will be 114 as your answer correct to 3SF. And this is your uh, 114, uh, which is the what mean number of hours. So 114 hours as your answer for part C of question number one. The description below and click on this link to access the Patreon page for the full video. With that being said, good luck and thank you for watching.